Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Adam and Orange and welcome to this review video for another Metal Earth model, this time for the Freightliner Snowplow. And I've already built a couple of Freightliner models as it is, I built both of the trucks, both the long nose and the flat nose truck, and those were interesting and, and fairly detailed models, and this one is very much the same. These Freightliner models, if you're into these big heavy trucks, are pretty well detailed, especially for their size. There's a lot of bits and parts and bobs that go into these. This one actually has an interior section, whereas I believe the box truck or the flat nose truck, not box truck, flat nose truck, did not have an interior. I think I remember somebody being a little disappointed in that. But this one does. It's not much to the interior, but at least there's a couple of seats and a steering wheel and dash in there. There's a lot of detail on the outside with the different lights and the horns and little side mirror things. Although the side mirror things, I don't know how actually accurate they are to the actual Freightliner model. I did see a picture, I think the picture on the packaging shows the lights attached slightly differently. But then again, just how much can you do with a tiny model like this? So. Some slight variances in detail there, possibly because it's just not possible to attach it in another way. They had to kind of alter it to be able to make it work, because those are pretty thin lights. But the amount of detail in this front section and all the pieces and bits to that, that's almost its whole own assembly right there. A little blade, I guess, stored underneath. I'm not actually familiar with the snowplow trucks. I see snowplows driving down the road in the wintertime here. Don't know if they're freight liners. The ones I see this is tilted the other way so as to push the snow towards the curb and they'll have a second blade swung out to the side in addition to that to help push the snow even further. So I'm guessing that's what this is. I don't know a lot about the actual truck itself but this seems to be a fairly well detailed lots of little parts model. And in building it I had to kind of revise a technique or two of mine to make things work and that's not just with this Freightliner, but it's kind of developed over the build of the three different Freightliners when it comes to shaping this hood section. All three Freightliners have a similarity to the way that they're shaped. And previously I had just used a drill bit or, or something to kind of lay in that area and try to curve the part around it. And it's such a tight little curve. It wasn't really working that well. So with this model, I gave us something, I gave a new technique a try and that was you to use a uh, angled little nose pliers to kind of grab and bend gradually and slide outwards on the part and form the curve that way and that technique worked way better than previous attempts I did that with both the side pieces on the front hood and this back piece on the cab here I formed both of those curves in that fashion and that technique worked way better than trying to use a drill bit to bend it over. Another little thing is that I was a little unclear of in the instructions that I figured out later and, and you may or may not have the same problem but well if you watch this video you're not. These pieces up here, these little lights, I had misinterpreted the which side the engraved side was supposed to be on and I folded it so that the engraved light is inside of this cage whereas after looking at the picture online and looking at an actual picture of the model it appears that the light up here is supposed to be pointed backwards so I seem to have done that incorrectly so that's one thing that I got a little mixed up on the instructions and thought I knew better should have taken a moment to stop and look up actual pictures of the model to make it correctly and that is my own doing for not doing my own fault I guess you could say for not making sure I did that correctly um, while I'm up here I do want to point out I find this amusing these two lights right here on top of the cab when I was putting those together those pieces the way they stick out I could not help but to think of Wally if you're not familiar with Wally the Disney movie and the little garbage collecting character could check it out those little front pieces remind me of his headpiece there's some odd and difficult situations that come up in some models inside the cab. There's a framework that sits right between, I think, the cab and the back piece. It's kind of hard to see. There's a framework that had a couple of tabs buried in there that the only way I could get to them with, was with my precision tweezers. So it's a good thing I had that without a fine pointed 
type of tweezers, you might have some difficulty getting to that particular tab and folding and twisting it as necessary. There's another piece that I had difficult with, a similar difficulty that I had with the Star, one of the Star Wars Solo models, the uh, speeder bike, that uh, Infinite speeder bike, where I think it was that one, where there were some pieces that were so thin and there was so much detail. When I went to fold the side pieces over, the actual part curved along with it. I can't honestly remember for certain which part that was. I believe it was part 54 that one of the sides did that. And with that, I just hauled it on that already bent over side piece, kind of pressed it on the table and pushed it back flat and was able to attach it and work out. Whereas it was a slightly larger piece, so I was able to do that more effectively than I was with the previous situation that I had with the, with the Infos Nest swoop bike is what it's called. These are the kind of things that you sometimes run into building these models, little odd little details that you have to kind of improvise and try to fix. There was a situation with part 81. There's two parts 81 and I've also another situation that I've run into in the past and this one was particularly difficult. It's just four side pieces folded down into sort of a rectangular box shape and it sits on in the two side tabs. When you go to fold them what happens is when you put pressure to try and fold it over it also puts pressure on the box itself and tries to tilt the sides and that's what was happening. Now this piece was fitted on a very thin part to where the other two sides that would normally fold down and give it support were kind of hanging off the edge and not providing that support. Whenever I would try to fold the part over it would just warp the side and then I could try to fold the other part and it would warp back the other way and there wasn't really much of a way to brace it effectively while folding that part over because there was no other support under there and I had trouble with that and after a few tries I got the tabs partially bent over. I didn't bend them all the way like I like to and a lot of times what I'll do is put tweezers on the top of the part and underneath where the tab is and pinch but if I did that it just wants to collapse the part over so I couldn't really do that without damaging or possibly breaking the part so after a few attempts and getting it mostly secure I stopped before I bent it back too many times and actually broke one of the edges and the part comes off. So I wasn't able to secure them as well as I'd like. If I had it to do it over again I might try more of a twist with the tweezers instead of a fold. I don't know that that would really make much of a difference. It's just, it's just one of those parts that's difficult to do it how I'd like to do it because there's just not a support there and it's difficult to get more tools into the area because there's such very little area to grab onto to really do it effectively. So be a little careful of that. Don't feel bad if you can't get it as secure as you like and neither could I without possibly breaking the part. And one last thing, getting the cab on, and this is frequently when it comes to joining top and bottom halves or getting a cab of a car or vehicle over the framework. There's difficulty with this particular cab. There's only four tabs but the two tabs right here in the wheel wells in that area I had to kind of flare the tab out a little bit it's the, the framework is actually narrowed forward but there's just barely enough room and it's a tight squeeze to get that framework in under the top section which kind of wants to make it spread out and you have to bend the tabs a little bit to face back towards the actual part or slot to get things to sit in. So that was a little bit of a challenge. It wasn't very difficult to overcome, but it wasn't something that was just gonna fit and snap down on top right away, at least not for me. It was a little bit of finagling there and I was able to get that on. So overall, that was a fairly challenging model, but not overly difficult, not frustratingly difficult. It was a fun build. It helped develop some techniques. So I learned a little bit building it and tried out some new things. Very much enjoyed the model. In the end, it's a wonderfully nice looking model with lots of details, so it's definitely worth the effort. Some of the areas are not as secure as I'd like them to be, but that's kind of the nature of these models. It can be very difficult to get things completely secure without a drop or glue of some sort, which I do tend to avoid. And it's not something that I'm going to play with. I'm going to put it on a shelf and look at it and occasionally pick it up and examine it closely and have my friends ooh and ah over the fact that I can put this little metal thing together. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Is it worth it? Definitely. It is a challenging but fun build and worth the effort and definitely a nice addition to the Freightliner models. The Freightliner and Cat models are a step above some of the older Metal Earth models, not to insult some of the older models, but they've seemed to have taken the time to include more detail. This is a three sheet model. 
taking time to include more detail and more small parts and more to it, it makes it a longer build, this build taking about three hours to completely put together, but it's worth it in the end because you end up with so much detail and so much little parts on this particular model. You don't just have a plain part or a plain model that just has some engraving to kind of make up for what is not there. You actually have a lot of the smaller parts and smaller detail parts going on there making it a better model. It's only so much they can do with a model that size because it is a metal earth and not one of the larger iconics. It's definitely showing a, a progress of evolution of the models that Metal Earth is putting out. Really well done. If you take that and compare it to something like the um, Ford Mustang that came out quite a while back, the Ford Mustang does not have a whole lot of detail to it and the final result is not as nice as I would like it to be. It's a curvy model and a little difficult to shape but I think there could be some improvements. I would like to see with the amount of development that Metal Earth has made at this point, making their models and putting detail in it, I'd kind of like to see what the um, Mustang would look like had it been developed at this point in time. Just a thought for you. I'll leave it at that. Enjoyed this model, and I've got one more Freightliner to put together, which I'll do eventually. Pretty much any model that's out there I want to build, but I'm just one guy going along as best I can. If you enjoy these videos, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. A little bit goes a long way. There'll be a link in the description down below. And at the very end of this video here in just a second, thank you to my Patreon supporters, current Patreon supporters, for making these videos possible and giving me the freedom to make these models, make these videos, and help others out. Thank you very much. As always, thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.